Welcome to our lecture online. Here are our next two examples of how to figure out if things are properly constrained, if things are in equilibrium, and whether or not we can determine the forces involved. So let's say we have a point A, point B, point C, and let's have point A, point B, and point C. So when we look at this one right here, notice that both of the supports are on rollers, which means that the force counteracting the weight or the force right here pulling down on the beam has to be perpendicular to the surface so we have two forces here we have the force at A we have the force at C and notice that since this thousand Newton force is right halfway in between these two right there we could then say that they must carry half the load so F sub A must be 500 Newtons and F sub C must be 500 Newtons because the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero and so we can say this is equal to minus a thousand newtons caused by this force right here plus f sub a plus f sub c since they're equidistant right there they must carry each half the load so from that we can say that f sub a must be equal to 500 newtons in a positive direction and f sub c must be equal to 500 newtons in the positive direction notice there cannot be any forces in the horizontal direction so we know that we're constrained in the vertical direction but we're not at all constrained in the horizontal direction any force acting on this system in the horizontal direction will cause us to move and there's nothing to hold it back so therefore we can say that it's partially constrained it is currently in equilibrium that means unless another outside force acts upon it there will not be any motion everything will stay in place so it is in equilibrium in equilibrium and the forces are determinable so we are able to determine the forces at A and the forces at C now let's go back now let's go to this example right here and can we determine if this is completely constrained now the first at first sight you would say no it's not constrained because notice that this force here will cause a torque to exist and there's nothing here to hold it back from moving this way and since we know that the, that the torque right here causes this whole thing to rotate in this direction it would at first appear that there's nothing there to hold it back because of the angle however when we look more carefully at it we realize that this force acts in this direction let's call that the force at B which means there'll be two components there'll be a component in the vertical direction force at B in the y direction and there'll be a component in the horizontal direction force at B in the x direction and it is this component in the x direction that will counteract the moment caused by this thousand newton force so the thousand newton force will cause this whole thing to rotate this way clockwise this component will hold it in place constrain it from moving in that direction so there will not be any strain in the vertical direction over here because on the so on the point C right there the force can only act in the horizontal direction so this is F at C so we can say that this is actually properly constrained and because of this force right here and this force right here it cannot move in this direction because of this force and this force and this force right here will have a vertical force at A force at A it cannot move in the vertical direction so we can say that this is properly constrained it is in equilibrium and we can actually determine all the forces involved so how do we determine the force involved well we can say that we can calculate the force at B in the X direction because uh, that has to compensate for the moment in this direction right here so what we can say here is that the sum of the moments at A must add up to zero which is equal to since the thousand Newton force would cause a clockwise direction that's a minus a thousand Newtons multiply times 0.5 meters because that's the moment arm from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force and then we have this force right here plus the force B in the X direction because it causes a counterclockwise direction of motion in the rotational sense and so that would be a positive torque or a positive moment and the distance is one meter so that means that F sub B in the X direction must therefore equal to uh, that would be a positive 500 newton meters divided by one meter which is equal to a positive 500 newtons well actually be careful again because we know that the direction is negative so that this would be a negative quantity so plus 
a negative quantity, so we have to put a negative sign in there to compensate for negative quantity. We need to put a negative sign there, a negative sign there, and therefore a negative sign there. So we know that the force at B in the X direction will actually act in the negative X direction. Okay, since this is acting at a 45 degree angle, because this is one meter and this is one meter, and this B sub X is a component of F sub B, that means that F sub B in the Y direction must be equal in magnitude to F sub B in the X direction because there's 45 degree angles on both sides, so they have to be equal. Otherwise, you cannot have a 45 degree angle there. So because of that, we can say that F sub B in the Y direction, F sub B in the Y direction must also be 500 Newtons. And since this is 500 Newtons and this is 1000 Newtons, and then there's only one more force holding back the, the, the weight in the vertical direction, we could then say that the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero, which is equal to a positive force B in the y direction plus a positive force in the a direction minus 1000 Newtons. And so we know that this is going to be 500 Newtons, so zero equals 500 Newtons plus F sub A minus 1000 Newtons. So finally we can say that the force at A must therefore also be 500 Newtons. Newtons. All right, so it looks like all the forces can be determined, it is constrained, and it is in equilibrium. So that's how we decide the various forces on each of the objects. That's how we decide whether or not it's constrained and if it's in equilibrium. And under advice of my assistant here, it looks like I should not have put these forces, these negative signs in there, and this is therefore a negative F sub B in the... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, 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 nope, nope, this is the wrong one. Got to make sure I differentiate that. So therefore, I can say that F sub B in the X direction is equal to minus 500 Newtons. If I want to make it a vector, then we can write it like that. So it's a technicality, but we want to make sure that we get this correct. So that's now correct over there. That's how we do that.